coach of the Indiana Hoosiers is, of course, Mike Woodson, who played for Bob Knight between 1976 and 1980. He joins us now. Coach Woodson, this obviously was not a surprise. You mentioned it, Hoosier hysteria a week or so ago that Coach Knight wasn't doing very well. I know that was the last day that you saw him. Still, that being said, I think there's always still a shock when someone actually passes away. What went through your mind yesterday when you found out that, that Coach Knight had passed? Well, I just had finished practicing. Um, we had a long practice yesterday, and then when I got off the floor, um, my trainer, Tim Garl, came and told me he had passed away. And it's just a tremendous loss, man. I mean... You know, I've spent 46 years of my life with the guy who basically shaped my career as a player and as a coach and as a man. And he's going to be missed, man. I mean, when you think about all the things he's done here at Indiana, make no mistake about it, Indiana basketball will always be Bob Knight. Uh, him sitting at the top because he set the table for a lot of things that's happened here at Indiana University from a basketball standpoint. And um, it's going to be hard to replace him. I mean, because he's done so much for so many young student athletes and just people in general, man. And um, it's tough, just a tough, tough day for me. Coach, for those who didn't know Coach Knight, who just knew the public persona, what are the adjectives that you would use to describe him as someone who knew him for, as you said, nearly half a century? Tough love, uh, disciplinary, which, you know, I, at a young age, you know, I, I lost my dad when I was 14, so... You know, I kind of needed that in my life at that time. And my mother loved him for that um, because not only was I playing basketball, I was here to get an education, which that was number one on this list. Um, basketball was secondary, but he pushed me along with my teammates to heights probably that we thought we could never reach. And my four years here, man, was just, it was unbelievable. I couldn't have picked a better coach. Uh, yes, he was tough, but sometimes in life, you have to go through tough things to be successful. And um, I've turned out just fine as a man and as a player, as a coach. Um, and I have nothing but thanks, you know, in terms of, what he's done for me. Um, I thank him with the bottom of my heart, man, because again, I wouldn't be sitting in this seat today coaching the team that he made it all happen. For me, it's like a, a dream come true, man, but it's so it's unreal. Well, I'd say you turned out better than just fine, Mike, but uh, I, I, I want to dive into that a little bit because I do find your personal story to be really interesting and kind of emblematic of what Bob Knight did for people in their lives. As you said, your father passed away when you were really young, a teenager. You grew up in Indianapolis. You went through a really challenging time losing him. You go to Bloomington as a highly recruited player. And you know, freshman year, you miss a block out, and he's got you running the assembly hall steps for an hour. You can look back at it now and, and say, you know, he obviously made you into the person you are. What was it like in the moment, though? Like, how do you know as a young person that, hey, this is what's right for me, this is what's good for me, when all you're thinking about is, is how much your thighs burn? Well, again, you know, at that particular time, my thought process after running those stairs was, you know, I can't quit, you know. It was, I had too much at an early age invested in him. I mean, that's how much... He sold me on Indiana and Indiana basketball. And that was early on as a freshman. I couldn't quit. I dared not to quit. And, you know, I I think back to those, those times, you know, every year I was benched, you know, where 
you know, maybe I didn't play, you know, the 30 plus minutes that I normally play, but I came off the bench a couple of times every year because he made a point that, hey, even though he might have thought I was the best player on the team, he saw something that maybe I didn't see. So he punished me for it. And that was okay because it was all a learning lesson in terms of my growth and my my basketball game. Um, so, I mean, I I think as coaches, we have all kind of tactics and, and ways and how we try to reach young men. And, you know, he did it his way and I benefited from it. I responded, you know, I didn't go in a, a different direction or close up in a shell uh, and run from it. I took the challenge and, and uh, I have him nothing but to thank for it because, you know, it's easy to quit. His coaching tree is so amazing, Mike, and obviously you're a part of it. Mike Krzyzewski is a part of it. Dusty May just went to a Final Four, was a, a manager for him. Lawrence Frank was a manager for him. Chris Beard, Randy Whitman. I mean, the list just goes on and on. It, it's, it's a remarkable group. Steve Alford, obviously, has become a, a really good coach. What was it about him as a teacher of the game that led others who had been around him to want to coach as well? He was brilliant, you know, when it comes to the game of basketball. And a lot of coaches can't say that. A lot of people can't say that about coaches. He was brilliant, man. I mean, he thought a step or two ahead of most of the coaches that he coached against. And it showed, you know, I mean, I think when you coach, you want to build a tree and you want people that's under that tree to blossom. You know, I'm a living witness to it, Alfred. I mean, it goes on for days, Mike Krzyzewski, you know what I mean? Uh, we all benefited from Coach Knight because he made it where we kept in contact and he kept the relationship after all these years, man. I mean, and only certain people can do that. I call those special people that can develop relationships and keep them all these years. I mean, it's the, the dynam dynamic of the power of an individual that's gifted to do that. And he was gifted to do that. I mean, you think about all the people that, like you mentioned that he's helped. It goes on and on. All the players that he's helped. I think the big thing about Coach Knight, the most beautiful thing about him was he kept us all together as a family and we were all able to always pick up the phone and call it, come back and see him. And that doesn't happen a lot in in any sport where you keep a relationship with your coach and, and knowing that he's going to always be there for you because he was there for me all these years, man. And that, that means a great deal to me. What do you think drove him, Mike? I don't know. I think he had early success as a young man. You know, you think back to the Ohio State days and playing for Fred Taylor and and that great team that they had with John Lucas and Havlicek and winning a national title. Well, he was on the end of that bench just soaking it all up and and then went on to start his career as a as a coach, man. And you know, I think once you get involved in this game of coaching, you know, I, I never thought I would coach. But once you once you taste it and it drives you. And I think it drove him all those years, man. And the success he had here, you can't even measure it, man, because it, nobody probably thought he would do that when he first came to Indiana. But he put this university right on the map, man. And, and a lot of people benefited from it. Mike, we all know the departure from Indiana was messy for Coach Knight. And then he returned 
to Bloomington in 2020. Obviously, he's lived in Bloomington here for a few years, but returned publicly, went back to Assembly Hall. What did it mean to you and to the people who cared about him and loved him to kind of see that come full circle, to see him back there and to see him embracing IU once again? It had to happen. Uh, again, you know, make no mistake about it. Indiana basketball is going to always be Bob Knight. You mentioned it. You're going to mention Bob Knight first. So we had to get him back, man, because Hoosier Nation was mourning the fact when he left and, and the fact he was away all those years at Texas Tech and doing the ESPN when he retired from basketball. It was important that we got him back home, man, where he belonged. And he made the commitment to come back, which was a surprise to everybody because I didn't think he would ever come back. I truly believe that at, at that time. And we got him back and where he belonged and the fans appreciated it. Hoosier Nation appreciated it. I personally appreciated it uh, because this is where he belonged and he died here at home. So, you know, it was the right thing to do. My deepest condolences to you and everyone who loved Coach Knight. I know it's been a really difficult day and very, very much appreciate you taking the time to remember him with us. Thank you.